Okay, here we go. It's the APB 130 from Autel. Just got the box delivered a couple of days ago. We're going to try and read the data from an MQB dashboard. This is, a, I think, it says Volkswagen Polo 2016. So I've made all the connections to the dashboard. So there's your your ground, your positive. And there's my little pin lifted, or a little jumper wire onto there, and yellow, orange, and blue. So the power connections are all made. I have it connected to the XP400. Could have had the 12 volts. So that's it connected. So let's just see what if this works. I've done I've done this very same dashboard with the. VVDI Prog and also with the VVDI 2. So let's just see here now what we get. Sorry about the glare from the light. So let's see if we've actually got a connection. So as I say, this is the APB 130. Connected to the XP400. And this is the lift pin method. So if that uh, is any better for any of you guys to understand what I'm talking about. Do it MQB Volkswagen. All keys lost. This is just a test dashboard so we don't actually have, we're not going to make keys for it. We just want to see if reading the data is possible. So. As I say, I've already done this dashboard with the VVDI prog and the VVDI 2 and recovered the data and diagnosed the MO data. So I have all that done. We just want to see if it's possible to do this using the APB 130. Now, I haven't seen any videos online of anybody doing this job. So hopefully this will be a success. But uh, you see, your biggest risk doing this job is lifting the pin on the chip there. As I say, this is a this is a test dashboard that I managed to source from eBay, and uh, so there's no loss in it. It's not a customer's. But I've already done two MQB all keys lost jobs for a 2016 Polo and a 2014 A3 Audi. Both were successful. Keys both start the car and run using MQB and sending off for the sync data so the system does work. What I'll do is I'll pause this video and when this starts to read we'll, we'll go back to it. Now it has sat there for quite a long time. Uh, the flashing consistency on the green has now changed and she's starting to climb up there now. She's up, starting going from 7. She's did sit at 7% for quite a long time. Anybody who's been kind of watching it there would see the timer there so it's now reading the data. Uh, slowly, but it's getting there. But if I remember on the VVDI prog, it's exactly the same. It does take quite a bit of time to read the data from the dashboard. So we'll just let that work away there. Now it's at 14%. So it looks like it is being successfully read. As I say, there's the connections on the board. Uh, your positive and your negative. And then your blue, yellow, orange, and your white to the chip pin 3 on the dash board. Now on the VVDI prog we do have a, a 1 ohm or 1k ohm resistor between the orange cable and the red voltage cable, the power. But uh, on this one here now it doesn't seem to want that APB130 doesn't need the resistor for some reason. Now this is the first time I've ever used this on the Autel so we'll come back to it once it's read it and we'll see how it does. Now we're up now about 44%. Has taken a bit longer than I expected. The time is now 2042, so it has been quite extensive. I think the 5 to 10 minutes, please wait, might just be a wee bit out of uh, kilter. But we're about halfway, getting close to halfway through. As I say, your connections to the dashboard. She's connected to the XP400, the 12 volt USB connected, of course, and the APB board, APB 130 board is connected straight to there so as i say your most biggest problem is your fvdd cable there the white cable going to the chip when it's lifting the pin on the chip 
so that can be a bit hair raising trying to get that chip there. I think with this test dashboard there, I've actually broken the pin off of it. The little tiny copper wire you see there is actually soldered directly to the pad on the chip, but uh, I wouldn't worry too much about that. But you're doing it for with customers ones, just be a wee bit more careful. But uh, as I say, the connections are all fairly simple. It's all well explained uh, on the diagram where all the wires go. So it's not that thing. As I say, if you're fairly proficient at soldering, shouldn't be a problem. As I say, we're now at 57%. We're probably running about maybe 12 minutes or 10 minutes since it started. So we'll come back to it when it gets up close to 100% and then we'll follow the next steps, which I believe will be saving the data and then converting the MO data. So we'll get back to that as soon as it's ready. Yeah, we're now up about 82% there, so we're getting very close to having a complete read. Uh, whether or not it's successful or not, we'll find out shortly, but... Uh, we're slowly getting there. As I say, I started this, I think, about maybe 15 minutes ago, 14, 15 minutes ago. So I would take the 5 to 10 minute data read a wee bit liberally. It's not exactly that, but again, I suppose it just depends on your the speed of your program and the speed of this. But uh, we're slowly getting there. As I say, the connections, it's the APB 130 from Autel. It's only just been released, as far as I remember. I did see it advertised, but I say I've got the MQB license from Xhorse, and I use VVDI Prog and VVDI2, and successfully I have done a couple of all keys lost on MQB. So this is a new one now to try it with the Autel and the IM608. Whether or not you need to have a license for this one to get the sync data, I have no idea, but we'll see. It's the first time doing it, so we'll follow this through and see exactly where it goes. So we're nearly finished. I'm assuming that once it's read the data, it'll give you an option to save the data to a place of your choice. So we'll save that to the MQB test dashboard folder, which I've probably still got to make. But Right, we're at 100 percent right okay so it wants us to think it so we're in vw we'll just make a new folder got mqb test dash confirm it's got to find it there now so here we go i'll not bother changing the name we'll save the data I do apologise for the glare from the overhead lighting, but I would imagine that the file is actually quite big. If I remember from the VVDI prog, it might be about 30 meg, but that's the data saved there now. So that's it there. Okay. So let's go calculate about data. So I have to select the file, MQB test, select that file, hit OK, calculating. So let's just see what happens here now. You want to save the above data? Yes. There we are. We'll just call that save. Okay. So there's the MO data. Key one, key two. There's your CS code. Your Mac. 
I would imagine the only thing it's missing is a pin. So, okay. Wonder if you could make a dealer key. So you need the ECU synchronization hex, which is what you'll have to send off to China to get. So that is the only way to get the deal to make a dealer key without an all keys lost. So if you've got an all keys lost and you say yes, it'll ask you to put the the original key in the slot of the program and press OK. Right? Of course we don't have a key, so it's not going to find it. So if you want to make a dealer key, do you have an original key? No. It's going to ask you for the ECU, 32 by ECU synchronization data, which you will get from the MQB calculators. Now, I use one and it's about $60 for mine, so. <coughs> of course, you can't get that there. So that's that's basically how to do, read the data for to decode the chip without having to buy the X-Horse license. Thanks for watching, guys. Talk to you soon.